I'm going to end up adding this video to the uh, CTE list. And I'm going to get into why. So the Portland Winterhawks, and I don't know why this wasn't reported on more. Maybe it's because it's the Portland Winterhawks. Uh, they went to the, the Oregon legislature with some with a bill. Which I think is kind of interesting. And I, I don't know if the Western Hockey League is going to like the way this played out. The Winterhawks were seeking to have their players considered amateur athletes and not employees, which would exempt the team from paying players minimum wage and preclude the players from workers' protection such as workers' compensation insurance and unemployment insurance benefits. The Winterhawks were hoping the lawmakers in Oregon would simply codify the exemptions that have been granted to major junior teams operating in Washington, Michigan, and B.C., Saskatchewan, Manitoba, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. Um, the, the thing is that the bill died. Okay, uh, so no harm, no foul, right? But um, in arguing that the WHL is a for-profit business, uh, two former players, Tyler Maxwell and James McEwen, argued their rights as workers have been repeat repeatedly violated. Maxwell, who played for the Albert Silvertips and Edmonton Oil Kings, these guys, alleged that he suffered a cracked kneecap after being hit with a slap shot and was forced to return to the game and play seven more games before being able to get an x-ray. He now has four pins in his knee from surgery and still suffers pain from the injury. McEwen estimated that in his four seasons with the Seattle Thunderbirds and Kelowna Rockets, he was in 75 fights and suffered numerous concussions. He said because he pr pursued a pro career after junior hockey, his scholarship money was gone and that he had to pay for his own healing. He said he suffers from depression, mood swings, and thoughts of suicide. He also had to go into debt settlement. Children are being abused, manipulated, exploited, and neglected, he told the committee. I don't think this is information that the Portland Winterhawks had intended to come out in this. See, it's funny because, you know, if, if, if you're 15 or 16 and you go to work for a fast food restaurant, you'll probably get benefits. You may get crap pay, but depending on the restaurant, depending on the chain, you may get benefits. You may get decent hours. The weird part to me is we're saying, all right, well, kid goes and, and works at McDonald's and he gets benefits, good for him. He gets good pay, good for him. But a guy goes out on the ice and plays hockey and you've got thousands of people paying to come out and watch him and you go, not an employee. It's really strange. Now, the Portland Winterhawks were arguing that if they're recognized as employees, the Winterhawks are going to have to move. I, you know, I'm all for players keeping their amateur status, but I also think there should be something in place for these players. Now, I've gone into CTE and I've talked about the NHL till I'm blue in the face, but think about all the kids who play junior hockey, gone through their three, four years, or sometimes less than that, and these players are servants for their team. Uh, there's a mention in the article here, and I'll, I'll link the article in the description for this video. Uh, there's a mention of a player who got pulled off of his uh, his team bus before going on a road trip, uh, and and this kid's mother didn't find out until one of the other parents phoned her to say your kid got cut from the team. And that's that's awkward. Because um, uh, unlike the NHL, it's important that a team contacts a parent and says, hey, um, your kid's been cut. You know, come get them, we'll arrange transport home, something. See, the CHL, which is Canadian Hockey League, even though there's teams in the States, I know. Um, the WHL, QMJHL, or just QMHL, um, and the Ontario Hockey League, the OHL, uh, these three have been very, very anti-union for the players. These kids don't deserve a union. And there are plenty of fans who agree. My statement on it would be this. I don't think the players necessarily care about the hourly wage. But protections are important. And teams make good money on junior hockey. They, they do. They make good money. I'm not saying they're making NHL money. I'm not saying they're even making American Hockey League money. But they're making some good money. There are teams like the Edmonton Oil Kings, Calgary Hitmen, Vancouver Giants, who are likely doing very well for themselves. Kelowna Rockets, another one. The slippery slope is this, and I, I get it. 
They want the league to be profitable. But anytime something like this comes up, they go, hey, if the players get what they want, we're all going to be out of business. The problem with that assertion is back in the early 90s, we had NHL owners telling us the same thing. Oh, we're losing so much money. Did you see the salaries? We're losing so much money. It's so, we're so in trouble. If if the players keep getting salaries like this, we're going to have teams going broke right, left, and center. We can't afford to pay this. And a cap comes into, in, into play, and, and now the wages are higher than ever in the NHL. And I don't see owners coming out and saying, we're going out of business, because we know it's not happening. And it wasn't happening back then either. I've worked at places that threaten to go union. I know how it works. I know how it works. One guy comes in and says, look, I, I talked to a rep from union group 289735, whatever, okay? And says, you know, our wages are probably okay, but we could probably get better benefits than what we get here. Or our benefits are okay, but you know what? Our, our wage compared to other people in this industry is just crap. Eventually, it gets around to somebody who goes to management and says, they're talking union on the floor. Management, either via email or via calling the right people into the office, says, be a shame if we had to move. Be a shame if you guys went union and we were forced to move. And I've seen it. I've seen businesses where uh, a workforce unionizes and they close up shop and they move six months later. And it's out of spite. And it's used as, as fear to keep everybody else in line. So when I hear some of the things that are being said by WHL owners... It was the same crap being fed to me by bosses at my old workplace who were raking in big money. And some of those people that I worked for were revealed as being crooked after I left. Where I was like, what happened to so-and-so? Why did they quit? Well, they didn't quit. They got fired. They got fired because they were crooked and they found out they were stealing from this and stealing from that. And it's like, oh, okay. So I am highly suspicious when I see an owner pulling their pockets inside of them going, we go broke. I'm broke now. We go broke if these guys unionize. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't trust them. And these are kids. These are kids as young as 15. 15, 16, 17. Today I did a video on Connor McDavid getting taunted. And what were people saying in the comments? They're teens. They don't know better. Right. Now you got teens out there playing hockey, junior hockey, who don't know better. So who's protecting them? And that's an honest question. If my kid was playing junior hockey, it would be a concern. Who's protecting my kid right now? You've you've got the billet families that that you know take care of the kids, make sure they go to school, make sure they make it to practice, make sure they make it to the game. Billet families do a very good job. The billet system works. I'm not complaining about that. But the coaches, while they are absolutely key to development of players. The organizations themselves, I'm talking about the ownership and, and those higher up, how much concern is there for that kid who's maybe riding on the fourth line, maybe on the verge of getting cut? My guess is not very much. This case in Oregon makes me wonder about all the exemptions that all these provinces and states have given junior hockey. Yeah, they're amateur athletes, they're not employees. Yeah, but... A lot of injuries take place. A lot of concerns these kids have, and rightfully so. Kids that miss out on their scholarships. They may have a scholarship to go to university. They, they choose junior hockey, and then junior hockey goes in and stick it. And they lose their scholarship. They get hurt. What about what about the kids that end up with depression issues playing hockey? We know that's a thing. We This is not a debate anymore. Former NHLers who made millions have depression issues after hockey. What about the kids that didn't make a bloody cent? And they're just discarded. It's worth talking about. And even if you're going to say, well, they don't deserve an hourly wage. Okay, so let's talk about whether or not they have a right to medical benefits and, and what kind of benefits, when those kick in, when they end, that kind of thing. Some kind of a fund that ju junior hockey can set up for these kids for after they're done. We talk about it for NHLers. After they're done the game, they need to be transitioned into life away from hockey. And most of us will agree that's a great idea and it works. So why not junior players too? They risk more than these NHLers do. NHL, you can play three years, make five, six million dollars, and 
you know, yeah, your your career might be over at the end of those three years, but you made maybe five or six million dollars. If you're smart with your money, if you have the right accountant, you have the right advisors, you're set. You never have to work again. You're good for life. I, I'm just saying that these kids that don't get paid in juniors, where does this go? And I'm, I'm waiting because I know players are going to unionize. And does the CTE argument start to hit junior hockey? It's worth looking at. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.